Hey, what's up? This is Bo Allen, seven-year NFL vet. Out of Wisconsin, also known as the Butter King, here to give you guys a butter breakdown. Today, what are we going to talk about? Obviously, the Super Bowl. Congrats to the Kansas City Chiefs. They won the game last night. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and the offense getting a lot of love, but I honestly think that the defense deserves all the shine um, for getting the Chiefs the second Super Bowl in a row. Steve Spagnuolo from uh, the defensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs is a coordinator that I really, really admire. So um, really big fan of him. Want to talk about the Chiefs defense a little bit today. Uh, the defense really stepped up when it counted. Need the defense to shine to kind of get Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs going late in this Super Bowl game. Um, a lot of these big, big plays came on third down. As Tony Romo would say, this is a big third down coming up, and there are a lot of those in this Super Bowl game, so we're going to check that out. Um, really, really what kept Mahomes in striking distance to work his magic in fourth quarter and overtime. So let's get started. As we know, the Butter King was a nose guard, not the most intellectual position on the football field. Thankfully for you guys, I'm smart as fuck. Um, but just keep in mind that coverage is not my strong suit, but – that does not matter. All right, look at this, the wide copy. We love it. So this first play is from the third quarter. Um, third and 15 on the Kansas City 49. Uh, this is the first drive of the second half for the Niners. Kind of a sloppy pick from Patrick Mahomes. Puts the defense on the field. Want to see how they respond. Obviously, they responded well initially in this drive, getting the 49ers into third and 15. There's a lot of really cool stuff I want to point out here. Chiefs are playing some kind of two-man concept here like I said not a coverage guy but know it well enough to explain it to you guys um, but what I really like here is that they're rushing three okay and then I think they're bracketing uh, Christian McCaffrey who's a really big threat with the linebackers I'll run this a little bit and show you uh, Willie Gay and Bolton here and so McCaffrey goes to uh, Bolton's side, and then since Willie Gay doesn't pick him up, he is spying Purdy. Play this out a little bit. You see Willie Gay ends up tracking Purdy down. Purdy scrambles, steps up in the pocket. Gay tracks him down, tackles him, forces the Niners off the field. And then one other thing I want to really point out here, uh, really good edge rush from Chris Jones and Carl Loftus here which forces Purdy to step up in the pocket. I've talked about Chris Jones a lot in butter breakdowns, even talked about how, you know, even though he's primarily a three technique, he's a really good rusher from the edge. So here he is. Here's Chris Jones working um, the defensive left, offensive right. Just look at this get off, like week 21. I love that. Uh, but really, really good job of just bull rushing the right tackle for the Niners. Brock Purdy obviously feels that. And that's how he ends up stepping up in the pocket. And uh, Willie Gay hawks him down. So really a lot of good things I like here. Really good coverage. Um, we're doing, like a like I said, some sort of two-man concept. We got a box, like a four over three over here. Ends up being three over two. Good coverage. Good outside rush. Good job from, from the spy linebacker hawking down Purdy. And uh, getting the Chiefs off the field. Uh, after a turnover from Mahomes. All right, moving on. This is the very next series. Kansas City was forced to punt after going three and out. I think the Niners are really expecting more of a blitz here, just looking at this. Um, you got a single high safety. I was watching this for a long time, trying to figure out what exactly is going on here with the linebackers. Again, Bolton and Gay. Because uh, you can see pre-snap, Christian McCaffrey is going one to two here. And, uh, you know, you get a little bit of a delayed blitz here from Bolton. I can't tell if, if it's by design or what I think is happening is he just sees McCaffrey staying in. Uh, so kind of creeps up there and then ends up blitzing late. And then you see Willie Gay kind of fall off. Um, but, again, what I really like out of this is there's a really nice edge rush off of this defensive left side from Karloftis. It's a really good job. Getting to block Brock Purdy, making him uncomfortable in the pocket, kind of working through the right tackle and then also McCaffrey. And then just look at this angle. Like, Purdy feels this pressure. 
coming off this edge from Karloftis and throws his ball off his back foot and uh, and misses Kittle here in a critical moment on third and 11. And, and the Kansas City defense and Spags did an unbelievable job of minimizing Kittle. Now he had a little bit of a shoulder injury late in the game. Don't really know how banged up he was throughout the course of the game, but Kittle's an unbelievable tight end. And uh, the Chiefs defense really, really neutralized him. But bottom line is really good coverage. Doesn't really have anywhere to go except for down here, um, you know, where Debo beats his man despite having a hamstring injury, still manages to get separation and, and is open here. But there's so much pressure from the edge that, like, Pur there's no chance Purdy can see this, uh, you know, longer developing route on third and 11. Like, good edge pressure. He's going to his guy Kittle. Can't work his eyes all the way across the field. And it's just a really good job by the Chiefs defense of, uh, you know, kind of using some confusing blitz concepts, getting home with edge pressure, and then playing good coverage. A lot of guys played really, really well in the Chiefs defense. All right, moving on. Oh, we got a run play. Thank God we're a little bit more in my wheelhouse here. So this is a critical third and two. Want to give a lot of love to this guy, Leo Chanel here. Guess where he went to college? University of Wisconsin. 103rd overall pick. He had six tackles, two pressures, a TFL, a block kick. He forced a fumble on McCaffrey uh, very early in the game. That was big. You know, had a lot of pressure on Purdy as well. Eight-yard TFL and a check down to Jennings. So he played really well. In my mind, he's a defensive MVP. You know I love shouting out Badgers on Butter Breakdown. So got to give Leo some love. But I want to show you him on this play. He did a really good job. So that's him right there. And then Mike Pinnell is a, you know, interior defensive lineman who I really like. He's played in the NFL for a long time. Had a great rep here. want to point that out. But uh, this is third and two. The uh, Niners bring back Juice into the backfield. They're in uh, 22 personnel here. 22, which means they have two uh, tight ends, two running backs. Or I guess two running backs, two tight ends. The running backs is always first. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's pretty clear from the offense's demeanor and the fact that they're in 22 personnel that this is going to be a run. So the uh, Chiefs, they're in this, like, short yardage, you know, kind of – it's almost like a goal line look where they're just packing all the defensive linemen in the A and B gaps. Um, but really great heroic efforts from uh, Pinnell and uh, Leo Chanel here is what really creates this play. So just watch this. Really good technique here, staying square, using your hands, fighting through this block or this reach block from Jake Brendel to center. This is a really tough assignment from him. Uh, for him on this rep I'll show you from the end zone copy and then Leo Chanel look at him here he sets the edge on the tight end plays with his hands and then knocks off juice and gets in on the play it's a really unbelievable job from him boom yeah takes out yeah, and he's in on the play watch it from the back it's really really nice big number 69 with a sexy sexy play okay so here he is this is a really so this is a boss concept um, boss just means back on strong safety so the entire offensive line is just doing zone this way with juice leading up and uh the running back McCaffrey getting the ball just a zone concept kind of the bread and butter for the 49ers offense outside zone concept with the the fullback on the strong safety but just look I lo love this get off like this is tough this is a really tough assignment here for Jake Brendel he needs to reach this two eye okay that's a that's a tough assignment just by alignment. It's really really hard. But what I love here um, from Big Sixty Nine is just really good job staying square, keeping his feet active. Like he kind of, I think he's a little bit surprised by the the lack of contact from the guard here. Gets his feet in the ground though. Does a really good job of defeating this block with his hands. Like he kind of misses his punch, but he still gets his hands in there. Gets extension. Is able to lock out the center get off it, reach, keep running his feet, and get in on this tackle. And then watch my – watch fucking big 54 here. Just sets the edge. Really nice job on the tight end. Hat and hands. Locks him out right here. Really good extension with his arms. Keeps his feet running. Throws that rip with his right hand. Oh, hits juice too. So that's awesome because let's say Leo Chanel doesn't make this play, which he does, which is excellent. He takes out two blockers and makes a play. But even if he doesn't, this dude's going to, you know, be able to scrape over the top and get in on the action. Um, but taking out two isn't enough for Leo Chanel. Still is able to get in on the tackle. That's an unbelievable play here. Now, the 49ers did convert this fourth down and went on to score. But 
got to give my Badger some love, and I got to give, you know, Big 69, nose guard, some love too. So thought that was a great play. Just really good uh, run defense from the Chiefs on that. Okay, here we go. After the two-minute warning, critical, critical situation. The Niners are driving the ball down the field. It's third and five, right? Score is 16 to 16. In the Super Bowl, fourth quarter, two-minute warning, and it's third and five. If you're a defensive player for the Chiefs, you have to understand that this is probably the biggest rep of your life, okay? Like, this is a critical, critical moment. And it's pretty clear pre-snap that the um, Chiefs defense is dialing up a blitz. Spags loves to blitz. He's got a lot of really creative blitzes. Uh, really keeps offensive on their toes with their protections, okay? And what I love about this is just the disguise pre-snap. There's a lot going on, okay? There's a lot of different people showing blitz, especially over on this defensive left side, on the offensive right side. Here you have Kittle in the backfield. He's going to be um, part of the protection in the back, and it just seems pre-snap that, you know, something is going on over here. Like, who's who's coming? You don't really know. You have the safety up here, which means it's likely that – Somebody is going to be blitzing from this side, but the disguise is really good pre-snap. 49ers offense isn't really sure who exactly is coming, okay? Guess who it is? This dude, McDuffie, coming all the way from the other side. Just a fucking great job disguising at pre-snap. McDuffie comes all the way from the other side. Kind of like, you know, he's faking like he's blitzing, then he's not backing out a little bit. Oh, shit, he's actually coming. Free runner gets right in Purdy's face, forces this incompletion. Really, really good job. I love this call. Like, Spag's got some fucking nuts, man. This is a six-man pressure on third and five after the two-minute warning. Like, this play call came after, uh, you know, a clock stoppage, which I love. Like, he probably had this uh, dialed up, like, had some time to think about it and brought the perfect blitz in an unbelievable situation in a critical, critical moment. And it got home. And I, I just got to say, like, this dude played fucking unbelievably as well all game. In coverage here, obviously, on this blitz, he had an incredible game. And he's a fucking really, really good player. Um, not really a whole lot to talk about. You know, just a great dial-up from Spags. Fooled the protection. You know, not really sure exactly what the uh, Niners called in protection here. But they're bringing six. They have six. They can block this up. They didn't. Great job from them. Okay, moving on here. So I've watched this play a bunch. This is a fucking, obviously a critical, critical play in the game. It's overtime, quarter five of the Super Bowl, 19 to 19, third and four from the Kansas City nine, all right? And I just love, like, just look at the Chiefs defense pre-snap. It's very clear that they're going to be blitzing here. And now you can't, like, no one knows exactly what the Niners are being coached to do, uh, but, like, when I'm looking at this, first of all, just watching from the sideline, like whenever this happens, Chris Jones unblocked, there's clearly a bust in the protection, right? That's not what you want. I just want to point out here that this dude, uh, right guard number 74, Spencer Burford, is stepping in for injured starting right guard number 55, John Fel Feliciano. And so what I love about this is, like, Spags is just dialing up a blitz that's attacking this area in a critical, critical moment. Um, again, I'm going to run this through. Like, I've watched this so many times. I just want to say, like, what you do not – like, I don't know exactly what the Niners are doing in protection here. It's clearly a play-action look. you got the center carling out here for the end. Uh, like, they start off an empty. McCaffrey's going to come flying across here, so it's a play-action look. You get a Carl – down block, down block. Um, and so I think it's definitely a bust in protection. But I know for a fact you never want number 95 unblocked because he's, he's enough of a problem even when he's accounted for, okay? And so it just, to me, I think the issue is right here. But more importantly than that, I just love the fact that Spags is dialing up a six-man pressure on third and four in overtime of the Super Bowl. You know, like, that's incredible. Like, what a play call from Spags attacking a guy who's filling in in the Super Bowl. Um, just a really, really good job here. And, you know, obviously it gets home. The Niners don't have time to really let this play develop because of the bust. It's just, you know, too much to handle. For the 49ers, from a protection standpoint, bringing six. And uh, 
Niners are forced to kick a field goal. Pat Mahomes and the offense go down all the way down the field, score a touchdown, and win the game. So, I love Spags. He's been masterful all season, leading one of the best defenses in the league, Super Bowl defense, Super Bowl championship defense. Um, I love, you know, the position he puts his players in. Sometimes they're covering, sometimes they're blitzing. The players on the defense played incredibly well. My guy, Leo Chanel, got to shout him out again. McDuffie, uh, Chris Jones, Karloftis, all these guys played really, really well in this game. That's what you want. As a defensive coordinator, you want to put all your best players in a position to shine. I think Spags really did that. I loved uh, his blitzes. They created a host of problems for the 49ers offense, especially from a protective sp- protection standpoint. Hats off to the Chiefs defense. I think they won this game. Thank you for tuning in for another Butter Breakdown. Keep you guys on the hook with a lot of fun off-season content. Stay tuned. Let me know if you have any ideas, shit you want me to watch, break down for you guys, and uh, see you next time. Like, subscribe, and slide in my DMs.